Okay, everybody, welcome to our very first field trip of the school year with Thompson County Environmental Resources Management. Just a couple different uh, housekeeping rules in case your teachers have not told you already. Make sure that you are signing in with your district account for YouTube. You will not see the chat, but you will be able to ask questions to the school everywhere. There are two ways to ask questions to people everywhere. You can go ahead and use the web tab and have poleb.com backslash pbcerm216 and ask questions that way. Or you can text using the number 67607 and then text in pbcerm216 and then that will allow you to ask questions. Please make sure that you are interacting. This is all about you guys getting the most of the audience. And there should have been a, da a data sheet that your teacher provided for you. So hopefully you guys will be able to participate along with the biologists like the data. And make sure you are grateful with the technology issues. Um, where they are currently at right now, there's a lot of wind. So we will have them kind of move in different locations to kind of get rid of that wind. But it is a little laggy sometimes, video-wise and audio-wise. So please just go ahead and um, be patient with that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this trip. And Alicia, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi there, Palm Beach County. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, teachers and students, to a new school year and also the beginning of our virtual live field trip. My name is Alicia Anderson, and I work at Palm Beach County Environmental Resources Management, which you've been told that's called ERM. So I'll use that term ERM. And um, I'm standing out on the beach right now, Palm Beach County Beach, and we've got an exciting event today. We are going to follow along with our research, our sea turtle research team and we're actually going to be with them when they're working but before i get started um i want to say this is a great way these virtual field trips for us to connect with you for us to share with you what we do at erm and also you get an opportunity to ask us questions because we're all scientists working out in the field and in the office and maybe you might be interested in this kind of science one day so feel free to ask us about our careers as well as what we're doing today so just to give you a set of where we are, I'm on Palm Beach County Beach. I'm on Singer Island in Riviera Beach. And I'm in this little section of our beaches. And I'm pretty sure there's about 50 miles of beaches in Palm Beach County. I think, I think maybe 46 or 47 to be exact. But besides these beautiful beaches that we have, they're also very productive for sea turtle nests. And we have a team of marine biologists at ERM that work with this program all year round. Um, I want to give you a little weather report, which has a lot to do with, with our reception. It's slightly breezy today. Um, the wind's coming out of the south, so that might we might need to get a little closer for our audio. Um, it's pretty warm but partly cloudy. It's probably about 85, but feels like 95. And probably the benefit of you watching this virtually is you don't have to get all sweaty and sticky and sandy and maybe it might even be smelly. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. But anyway, I hope you all have your data sheets because I have my data sheet because I want to work along with these biologists today. So before I go any further, I want to introduce T.L. Kuana who is the marine biologist at ERM that leads the turtle research team. And Teal come, Teal's been with us for about two years now, and she's got experience from all over South Florida. She's worked down in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, even over on the West Coast. She's been all around and brings lots of experience. So she knows her turtles, and if you've got questions, I'm sure she knows the answers. So any other thing that I want to, so, Remember what Miss what Miss McGill said. Because we're outside in the field, this is what field scientists do. Some kind of technology doesn't work with us, so we'll just do the best. We'll send you pictures. If you can't see real well, we're going to follow up with some really great pictures. 
So let me turn it over to you, Teal. I'm looking forward to it. I've learned a lot in the last few months, and I know you guys are going to learn a lot today. Awesome. Well, thank you, Alicia, and welcome, everyone. So what we're doing today, this is a hatch success evaluation, and we're going to guide you over to one of our nests that hatched just three days ago. So we wait three days to excavate these nests because the hatchlings were giving them an opportunity to make it to the water on their own. And it's also regulated by FWC permits. So Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission authorizes us to do this work. And part of that is waiting the three days for those hatchlings to make their exit out of the nest. And so this one we observed hatching on Saturday. Um, so we get to dig it up today and you guys get to see that. So we're gonna go ahead and walk up there. But as we're walking, I'm gonna have Sam go ahead and film the sea turtle track. So if you can see them here. It's really rainy. It's hard to turn around and go up there. Okay. All right, so really, really quickly, guys, you should have gotten a data sheet from your teacher. Um, hopefully, it was posted in your Google Classroom or given to you um, print somehow. Um, but, Teal, we do have one question that's already come in. They'd like to know how long sea turtles typically live for. <laughs> so, sea turtles, that, that depends actually on the factor. So, I'm sure most of you have seen. <laughs> and you, you hear uh, hold on a second we can look on oh, the yeah, we're having well, some audio uh, and visual issues really Sam you guys are frozen video wise and Teal is breaking up Yeah. Can can you hear us any better now? We can hear you better, but the video is still frozen. Frozen. Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes we have a little bit of service issues with uh, working close to the dune, but you can still hear us, right? Yes. Okay. So we we can at least still tell them yeah. about that stuff. So um. For, for sea turtles, um, you know, it, the 150 year old thing that Crush says is a bit of a myth. Um, turtles typically, we think, have, have a lifespan similar to ours. So they can live into their 80s, um, 90s maybe if they're lucky, but typically it's based on diet and other factors out in the ocean that, that are contributing to their health. So. It's all dependent on a lot of different things, but if they're a healthy, happy turtle, they're probably gonna live the same kind of lifespan that we live. So um, while I'm talking, Colette behind us is um, another environmentalist on our team, and she's gonna be digging the nest. And also back there, I have TJ and Emma. They're on our turtle team as well, and they'll be writing down the data and helping Colette out as she's back there digging. So Colette, you can go ahead and start. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about turtles and give you some background information while Colette digs up that nest. And then we'll talk about the contents inside that nest. So where we are today, as Alicia mentioned, we are on Riviera Beach. This part of the beach is the easternmost point in Florida, which makes it pretty unique because the Gulf Stream is very close to the beach here. So as turtles are traveling along the Gulf Stream and migrating, they stop off at beaches to lay their eggs. And here, it's really easy for them to come onto this beach and nest because the Gulf Stream is so close. So they actually really like this part of the beach. And we're in a small section that's monitored by a company that we contract out through the county. And they have biologists that come out every single morning and they're marking off the nests and evaluating them like we're doing now. And as they do that, they're counting all those numbers of nests as, as the turtles are coming in. And on this stretch of beach, it's only about a mile long, but we get up to 2,000 nests, sometimes more, just on that this tiny stretch of beach. Wow, that's a lot. How the, how's the video coming through now? 
Everything looks good at the moment. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh -huh. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so while we are doing this work, I did mention that it is conducted under FWC permits. So to do any work with sea turtles, you do have to be on a sea turtle permit. So we have to apply for those permits with Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission in order to do this work. And you have to have certain uh, experience and education in order to do those things. My background, uh, I have a master's in marine biology, but my focus was on sea turtles. I did thesis work on sea turtle nests and hatching. So I continued my career with them. This is actually my 14th sea turtle season. And then the rest of the crew that's working here, they also have years of experience working with sea turtles too. So it's something um, a little more specialized that you have to get involved in in order to do. But if you guys have any questions about that and, and career background, please feel free to ask that as we go along. We're happy to answer those questions. Um, here on this beach, we have three different types of sea turtles nesting that are our most common nesters in the state of Florida. This beach in particular is most popular with our loggerhead sea turtle. Uh, and here we um, see about 90% of the nests are our loggerhead sea turtles. Green sea turtles also nest here. They're our second most common nester. Um, they actually, uh, throughout, I'm sorry, there's a plane, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay. This is the beauty of working in the field, lots of environmental <laughs> factors <laughs> happening. Uh, especially on the beach. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, our green sea turtles, they are on a high year. So uh, with our greens, they are an every other year nester in the state of Florida. So one year we'll have a really high year and the next year we'll have a, a low year. So this year happens to be a high year. And that is the type of nest that Colette is back there actually digging right now. It is a green sea turtle nest. So we're hoping that when you get to see those contents that um, she um, we'll be able to show you a hatchling. Um, sometimes we get lucky and we do have one in the nest, so you might get to see that today. Our third most common nester is the leatherback sea turtle, and those are pretty rare. But here in Palm Beach County, we are in the top 25% of the state for leatherback sea turtle nesting. We typically have the, um, the highest numbers of leatherbacks out of other areas in the state. So. This makes it really important for research on leatherbacks here, as well as um, keeping track of them because they are a critically endangered species. So I do want to give you a little bit of info. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on camera, uh, but I do of them if you can. You can see it for now. Our most common nester, and they start nesting about mid-April through early September. Um, they're about two pounds of diet, preference of shellfish and crustacean, and they're able to eat animals like that because of these very strong, powerful jaws that are able to crush the shells of those animals. And that's actually how logger has their name because of those big, strong jaws. They have a really, really big head. So that's why they call them loggerhead. The loggerhead sea turtle crawls when we identify them as they come onto the beach. They actually have what's called an alternating gait. So they kind of crawl like a baby. Um, and as they're crawling, their rear flippers mark out the front flipper marks in the sand and make these comma like shapes on the beach. So that's how we identify that a lot of Hold on guys, be patient. They will be coming back. Um, they have not given us the latitude and longitude, nor have they given us the next ID. We do know the species for those of you guys that are filling things out. They are uh, going through and doing a green um, sea turtle. And then the hatch date was Saturday. So that would have been August 28th. And then today is the excavation date. So that would be August 31st. 
Um, the chamber depth we have not gotten yet because they have not gotten to the bottom of the chamber. And they are coming back, so give me a second to get them back in. And as soon as I get a second, I will ask a bunch of the questions that I see on the screen. I promise. Uh, Sorry, can well, you hear we, us, Miss Miguel? Yes, now we can see you and hear you wonderfully. Yay. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I think we were on the green sea turtles. Did you guys see any of this yet? We were on the loggerhead crawl. Okay. That's where you go when we cut out. When I lost you, did you hear me say that they make comma marks? Yes. That was the last thing that we had, and then it went. Okay. That, okay, that was basically the end with the long heads that they make the comma marks in the sand. Um, our green sea turtles, let me put it more in the shade. So they, um, these are our latest nesters. They, they come in mid-May and continue through to about September. These are the largest hard-shelled sea turtles. On average, they're 300 to 500 pounds. And the adults have a completely um, vegetarian diet. So they are living and sustaining those 500 pound bodies off of sea grasses and algae. Uh, they, because they are the largest hard-shelled sea turtle, uh, when they nest on the beach, they have extremely powerful front flippers. And you'll see these, these large body Stand it, it almost looks like a grenade went off on the beach when a green sea turtle nests. So that's how we know definitely that, that we have a green. Um, but also their crawl is different than the loggerheads. It's a simultaneous crawl where they push forward with both flippers at the same time. And it makes almost, uh, it looks like a tractor was driving on the beach um, the way their, their marks in the sand from their flippers are. So a quick question. So when they when they make those big deep cavities, is that what Colette's digging in right now? Is it yes. very similar to what it looks like? So if you if you look to where Colette is, this nest is a little unique because what actually happened here is a green sea turtle nested and then another green sea turtle nested after her, but right next to this nest. And when she was covering her eggs she made a large body pit on top of this nest. So that's why Colette looks like she's down in a deep hole on the beach and you might not be able to see her very well. So we have uh, a couple of body pits. Through. So a couple questions. Okay. Um, students want to know how long it takes for the turtles um, from laying to hatching. Um, they also would like to okay. know how far down is a typical chamber? So how far do you have to dig to be able to get to the eggs? And then there actually was a okay, question that so wanted about um, things that you would study for marine biology if you went to school for it. Okay. <laughs> so you guys are already jumping ahead of me on the, the nest uh, information there. So when Colette's actually digging up the nest, she's going to measure it for us and she'll tell us how deep it is. And we'll talk about uh, different depths for different turtles. So bigger turtles can dig deeper nests. Um, our greens because they are bigger and they create those large body pits are usually deeper than the loggerheads. Um, on average, they're gonna be about three feet deep where the loggerheads are about two feet deep. Our leatherback sea turtles, these um, are the largest sea turtle species in the world. They- Sherry, if you're in campus, please repeat. Oh, I thought we lost. Oh, okay. So these, Turtles start nesting in mid-March and they'll continue through to mid-June. They're our earliest nesters. And as I mentioned before, they are the rarest ones here in Palm Beach County. Um, when you see a leatherback track on the beach, you definitely know because you can't even stand across it. It's about six to seven feet wide. And that's because these turtles on average are 1,200 to 2,000 pounds. People have even compared them to the size of a small car on the beach. So if you can imagine, seeing that out here it's it's pretty special these turtles are closest to the prehistoric sea turtles um, and because they are lacking that hard shell it makes it much e easier for them to do deep diving 
So they spend most of their lives out in open ocean and they deep dive for jellyfish and that's their main food, food source. Uh, you can see in this photo, the papillae that are lining the uh, leatherback's mouth, those actually go the whole way down their throat. And the turtle uses that to tear up the jellyfish as they're swallowing. The leatherback nests are very, very large. When we, we see those on the beach, we definitely know it's a leatherback. As I mentioned, the tracks are so big, it looks like a monster truck was driving out here on the beach. Um, they also okay. typically... It's all right. They don't need to. We'll send it to them. They there typically do S shapes on top of their nests as well. All right. Before you guys continue, a couple different things. Guys, they haven't gotten to anything for the nest yet. So the nest ID, they're going to tell us when we get over to the nest. They'll tell us the longitude and latitude when we get over there. They'll tell us the depth. Just to reiterate, it is a green sea turtle. Okay, and as far as digging the chamber, um, it's not scary. It's just like if you went to the beach and you were digging a hole in the sand. Yep. <laughs> okay, and Miss McGill, I'll just reinforce that um, I'm going to be filling out a data sheet right along with them. Okay, and I will make sure they're filling them out as well. Okay, so we'll we'll make sure we have the information because I want to have the right information too. Okay. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going into a bit of the nesting process of sea turtles and we'll talk a little bit about the incubation and the hatching and what's going on here before we start counting the content. So sea turtles, when they come onto the beach, they need to lay their eggs in the sand because the eggs need a place to incubate. And inside each egg is a little embryo and those little embryos need the proper temperature in order to incubate and grow so that eventually they'll hatch and be baby turtles that make their way um, down the beach and into the ocean. And then hopefully one day we'll grow up and come back and actually nest on these beaches nearby. The, there, each turtle on average lays about a hundred eggs per nest and that varies with species. Um, but the nesting mothers can also lay from two to seven nests per season. And that's, that's also dependent on turtles. Sometimes they lay less, sometimes they lay a lot more. Um, they do that too, because part of laying um, multiple nests throughout the season and laying so many eggs per nest is that they have more attempts to making a successful baby to adult turtle. So when the turtles get into the ocean, there are a lot of natural predators, even even on the beach walking to the water. There are natural predators for these little babies because they're so small. Um, and hopefully you, you might get to see one. Um, but as they're crawling down the beach, things like birds, raccoons, coyotes, um, even those animals can dig up the eggs as well. Um, we've had fire ants predate on the nest. Um, some areas of the state even have hogs that will predate them as well. And then once they do get in the water, basically any animal that is bigger than them can predate these little hatchlings. So it's thought that uh, about one in a thousand of the hatchlings that make it to the water will survive to adulthood. So the odds aren't so great, um, but the turtles they do know that in a way, and that's why they lay so many nests per season, but also why they're laying so many eggs per nest. Teal, there's a question that just came in about when would be the safest time for the hatchlings to get into the water? So do they kind of, you know, have a clock where they kind of, you know, hatch themselves at night or during the day? Yep. How does so, so turtles, um, everything, because they're reptiles, it's temperature dependent. So when temperatures drop and it's cooler, that's what prompts the hatchlings to come up out of the nest and make their way to the water. And this is typically at night. So obviously during the day, you're gonna have really, really hot sand and the hatchlings aren't gonna wanna walk across the sand to the water on that. So at night is when they typically do come out of the nest. Um, 
they it's cooler and obviously it's going to camouflage them for more predators and they do um once they get in the water are better camouflaged at night as well while they're swimming out to the gulf stream and once they get to that gulf stream they live in sargassum beds that are floating out there in the seaweed and they're eating little microorganisms in that seaweed in those seaweed beds as they float along and grow and they'll follow the currents and as they turn into bigger turtles they'll come closer to shore and eventually they'll breed come back and lay their own eggs so yeah um colette is almost getting to a point i think where she has most of the nest dug up no okay so i just want to know if we do because you do keep mentioning that there's a possibility that we are hoping crossing fingers that there may be a hatchling in there still. What do you do with them when you find them? Okay, good question. <laughs> so sometimes there are hatchlings that don't make it out with the rest of the nest. So what happens when the turtles are getting ready to hatch, they kind of work together as a group to emerge from their shells. They use a little egg tooth on the end of their nose. It's called a caruncle. It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what tears open the eggshell so that they can come out. They'll work together as a group to push sand down underneath themselves and it kind of lifts them like an elevator up out of the sand. And they come out as a group and it almost looks like a water boiling over in the sand, but it's turtles coming up out of the sand. And that's when they make the mad dash to the ocean. So. If we were to find a turtle inside that nest, um, it would be one that just didn't make it out with the rest of the group. And that turtle will be released at dark if it's healthy. If it's not healthy, you know, if it's showing sign of, signs of weakness or it seems lethargic, uh, we would take it to a facility where it would be treated before it could be released. <laughs> did that answer it for you? <laughs> yes, that did. Okay. Um, so how often does PBC ERM get to pull permits to be able to do this? So this is actually something new that we're offering this year. And this is a little different than just excavating the nest like we would normally in the morning um, for data collection. This is for public hatch success evaluation. So that's an activity we had to apply for with FWC. Um, just started this year and it's been going really, really well. This is our first virtual event. So um, please let us know what you guys think after it's done. Uh, but we work alongside the group that is out here in the morning and they have biologists that are actually excavating these nests every single morning. And on this stretch of beach, because they're getting so many nests in such a small area, they actually don't mark every single nest. And what's excavated is just a subset of what's actually on this beach. And they set that up with FWC so that it gives them a sample size of the beach for FWC to monitor, for conserva other conservation managers to monitor like us at the county and make determinations on how well the beach is doing. So why we dig these up and why we're counting them is because the information that we receive from counting how many eggs hatched or how many hatchlings are in there, it's what gives us the hatching success rate and the emergence success rate that is on the bottom of your nest sheets. So that data is shared with all those conservation managers for them to determine if this beach is doing well. What we've seen in the last few public hatch success evaluations have been really, really great data. So it's telling me that this beach is doing well, um, but you can't make a final determination until you get all of your nests evaluated at the end of season. But the section that we've been doing is looking really, really good. So there was another question that came in. Um, so students are noticing the stakes and they've seen at other beaches that sometimes there is kind of like a little bit of a fencing type area that goes around. Mm -hmm. um, is one to help it as far as keeping predators out? Um, so you mean like an actual, um, like a cage? 
Yeah, they have like the cages or like like the little plastic fencing that goes around it to kind of mark it. Okay. So they're wanting to know if it, it's for predation to keep predators out. Yes, it, it can be. So some of the, um, some areas are permitted to have cages on the nest for predation. Um, some are in areas where they may be, um, the nests are behind rocks that weren't initially exposed and then they were exposed. So if the hatchlings were to run into those rocks, once they hatch, they would cage that nest um, to get the hatchlings all in the cage at once and then release them at a time when it was safe, safe for them um, to be removed from that nest and then put on a part of the beach where they could actually crawl in on their own. Teal, I think also extremely beneficial if you don't mind just talking about it really quick. So when they are having nesting season, can you talk about um, some of the things that needs to be done preventative wise for sea turtles? And yeah. Anything that they can do? Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So for sea turtles, um, they do have natural predators, but there are some anthropogenic effects on turtles and, and those are human induced. And what we see um, and, and deal with a lot at Palm Beach County Erm is lighting. So for sea turtles on a dark beach, it's instinctive for them to crawl towards the brightest horizon, which should be the reflection of the night sky over the ocean. But on beaches like that we're on right now, uh, there's a lot of development, condos, hotels, houses, and we make sure that places like this are keeping the east side of their condos dark and keeping the beach dark so that the hatchlings don't disorient towards those buildings. It can actually affect the mothers too. So we know on our darker beaches, we typically have higher nesting. And that's because the moms tend to stay away from the really lit up areas. Uh, on this beach, nesting's doing really well. Um, we have a really good uh, dune system that helps shade the other side of this beach and prevents the hatchlings from seeing a lot of the lights. But from time to time, we do have lights on in private uh, units in the condos. And sometimes we do have lights that are just forgotten about. Um, we start every turtle season, which turtle season is March the 1st through October 31st in Palm Beach County. And we start out every season monitoring these beaches for compliance with our lighting ordinance, making sure that everybody's using appropriate lighting. So when I say that, um, appropriate lighting for the turtles is lights that are shielded from the beach. They are low mounted and they actually are in long wavelength light spectrums and that's different for the turtles um if you think of a rainbow the side of the rainbow that's amber orange red that type of light the turtles can't see as well but white light includes all of the rainbow all spectrums of light and so when you have white light they're really attracted to it so instead, if we use the light towards the red end of the spectrum, it actually isn't, doesn't affect them as well. So that's why we ask condos, hotels, uh, private properties to use the red or orange lights in shielded fixtures um, that are low mounted. So there's the least amount of chance for those hatchlings to disorient towards there. Uh, another thing that we do see on our beaches, and I'm sure most of you are aware of, is pollution. Um, Plastic ingestion by turtles is very common. So we do ask if you are going to the beach, please clean up your trash, make sure that you don't leave anything on the beach that you brought with you. Um, and even picking up trash, participating in beach cleanups for trash that might've washed in from other sources um, is really, really helpful on Palm Beach County beaches. Some other things that can affect turtles, uh, we do see some, uh, unintentional boat injuries such as uh you know uh, injuries where the turtles are are hurt by propellers or actually by the boat coming down on the turtle itself so that happens a lot during nesting season because we have so many more turtles offshore during that time and we ask boaters to be more aware while they're out there and watch for the turtles 
Um, we do. Um, Can you talk about like um, holes on the beach and uh, like leaving out like uh, chairs and lounge chairs and all that? Yes. Yes. So we do have um, a furniture ordinance for, for beach furniture on the beach. And um, we make sure that people aren't leaving their beach furniture on the beach overnight and pulling it back um, behind the dune so that it's less likely for a turtle to get trapped in it. <laughs> so you, you might be able to see some beach furniture out here right now. So this all will have to be put away at the end of the day. We ask everyone at sundown to remove all their beach furniture from the beach. So if you are also visiting the beach, um, you should remove any furniture. Don't leave anything out there. Uh, if you dig any holes, definitely fill them in because hatchlings or the nesting mothers can get trapped in those holes and hurt themselves. And we definitely don't want that to happen either. Um, another question, um, a myth that people have heard, you can debunk it or um, tell them that it's true, is that sea turtles will go ahead and nest at the same location all the time. So they will make their way back to the same exact location to lay their eggs. So, yes and no. <laughs> Sometimes you have turtles that just have some really habitual nesting patterns and they'll come to the same area every few years. But then you've also got turtles that might nest in Miami, come to Palm Beach, and then go all the way up to Georgia. It just depends really on the turtle. The, we do have... Um, subpopulations of turtles off our coast that nest within a general area. Um, so typically a lot of the turtles that we're seeing in this area uh, will nest in Florida, up to Georgia, sometimes the Carolinas, um, the Gulf as well. We do get a little bit of crossing from the Gulf Coast toward turtles and over to here. Um, but typically they're using a, a big portion of the East Coast to lay their nests. Uh, we do, um, for our loggerhead sea turtles, uh, we do have 90% of the nesting occur in the United States occurring in Florida. So for our loggerhead sea turtles, this is a really important state for them. And, and um, that's why we've got a lot of conservation measures happening in our state and protecting these turtles. So I there was a question um, as far as when you guys are excavating that chamber. Um, if you find deceased uh, hatchlings, what do you guys do with them? Do you take them to do more further studies to yeah. find out if they might have been deceased, or do you let them oh. kind of do their course with nature? Okay. Yeah. So you're actually going to see what happens. Um, we're going to move a little closer because Colette's got everything dug up here. Um, I don't want to lose you guys. If we start losing you, let us know. Yeah, we're losing you a little bit. Can you hear us, Heather? You're breaking in and out, and video is now frozen again. Okay. Videos. Yeah. I don't have to do to, yeah. Well, I'll be. A, I'll stay closer with you. Okay. This sheet. Here we go. Audio is back. Show. Okay. Everything's back. Uh, video is still lagging, but it's, it's coming. It's it's it's. We're getting movement. Can you see any of the um, turtle that are between the legs? Yeah, we see we see uh, stuff coming into the room, but nothing clearly. And you're starting to break up audio wise. Okay. I can like hold some. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about now? We can hear you, but we can't see um, much of anything at the can't, moment. It's still freezing. Can't see much of anything. Okay. It'll catch up. Hey, are you back? Yes. Yeah. Doesn't like movement. So as soon as you guys move, it just takes a few minutes for it to catch. 
Okay. Okay. So um, you guys just talk to us. I'm we'll going to hear you. I'm going to stay close to the camera because I want to fill out my data sheet with you guys and probably Teal and Colette um, over by the nest can hold some things up and um, call out some numbers for us. So are we. Hopefully are we the nest is number one. What? what was that? Hopefully the nest ID is number one. They're eager for the nest ID. Okay. Ah, so, okay. Colette, bring the steak. <laughs> okay. I am too. All right. <laughs> All right. So, nest ID for this nest. So you're going to write down 710. So, that was the date that it was laid. And this, you're going to write CM. Anybody have any guesses on what CM might mean? <laughs> I'll let them take. So they might have something come in. Coming and then you're going to. But Miss K huh? has a guess. Nothing's coming. Through, but Miss K has a guess. What's okay. her guess? I'm putting you on the spot. Okay, is it the uh, the genus and species, Chelonia Midas? Yeah, very good. Yeah, <laughs> you're the awesome. first one to get that at one of my hatch evaluations. We had a super respond back to turtle species. Yep. Very good. Nice. Yes. So CM is for Chelonia Midas. That is the species that was laid this nest. And then 4G. So 4G is just the section of beach that we're on. And we use that um, to identify for the survey. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to give you the GPS latitude and longitude. We'll repeat this. Yeah. yeah okay. Negative 80.031 Okay. So the latitude was 26.797.5455. We want to watch. Oh, you're breaking up. Hold on, hold on. You guys are breaking up. We definitely can't hear you yet. Now you're starting to come back. Okay. We still need the longitude. I think I wrote it down, but I'm not exactly sure. You're still completely up and you guys are gone. All right, guys, hold on. Just to repeat while they're coming back on, the nest ID was 710, and that was the date that the nest was laid. CM, which is the species of the green turtle, and then 4G, which represents the section of the beach. The latitude is 26.7975455. We're still waiting on longitude. The species is green sea turtle. Hatch date was 828. Excavation date is 831. And they are back. Hold on. Give them a second to jump in. All right. So we still need to make sure that I have the right longitude. So you guys can repeat longitude. Okay. So we want to repeat longitude? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Okay, longitude is negative eight zero point zero three one eight two zero zero. So this has given us our specific location. Okay, we got it. You got that? You got that? Okay. 
the okay. next the next line is species. Can you guys tell me what species? We're just going to put the acronym. What is it? CM is on that stake. CM. CM, that is correct. Okay, the hatch date. Now, Teal told us it hatched three days ago. That was Saturday. And so Saturday was 8 28 21. And the excavation date is today. So today is 8 31 21. The next item is the chamber depth. And Colette just went to measure that. It's not easy measuring the chamber depth. <laughs> Colette, what'd you get? in there. 74. And survey says 74 centimeters. centimeters. We gotta make sure we have those correct units because scientists work in the metric system. Yep. Okay, so we have all our our hatch our nest ID data on top. Is that right? That would be correct. Okay, so now we're going to go down, and I'm working right along with you. The contents of the post-emergent nest. So the first thing is hatched eggs. So a hatched egg, we count only shells or percent are gray. We do that is because a little piece of this egg shell can break off. Work. Okay, we're breaking up. Back up some more. Yeah, I think I need to keep the phone up uh, higher. So if you can raise your hand okay. a little more. Yeah, there we go. We How bad. about that? Oh, much better. All right, can you repeat the, how we get the hatched information? Okay, so a hatched egg is 50%. Percent or greater pieces of the shells. It broke up. Yeah. Did she hear me? No, you're good. Yeah, we heard Did you. you guys hear? Yeah, fifty percent or oh, more okay. of the shells. Okay. Here. okay. So, so little pieces of the shell may break off as the turtle is coming out of the shell. And we don't count those tiny little pieces. We only count the pieces that are 50% or greater. And that's what we count as the hatched eggs. So Colette's gonna tell us what she got. 61. So 61 hatched eggs. 61, that's a good number. Yeah. Okay, everybody got that 61 of these hatched yeah. eggs that she counted. Okay, now we're down to dead pipped. I'm not sure what that means. Can you explain that to us, Teal? Yes. So pipped means that a turtle is partially out of the egg. So it's just pipping out of the egg. Um, sometimes that, that happens and they can be dead or live pipped out of the egg. We count both of those because that's important. It tells us that a turtle didn't completely make it out of the nest because they were pipped. Uh, did we have any dead pipped or live pipped? one dead pipped turtle. So we had one turtle that didn't make it out of the nest. Um, it, it unfortunately is deceased. Um, and to answer the question that you guys had before about um, the dead turtles and if they'd be buried, we do bury all of our nest contents back into the sand where they came from. This is what would happen naturally on the beach. And it's also really important for our dune system so we're providing nature, nutrients to the beach by leaving those eggs in the ground. So it's important to leave that because that's what feeds the plants. It actually can feed other animals um, as I was talking about the predation. So it's important that we leave everything naturally back in the sand. Sometimes um, they do use nest contents for research purposes and not all the time, but you also have to have special permits to do that as well. Uh, but for this nest, everything's just gonna go back in and. Um, just a normal nest, no other research needed on it. Um, the ones that didn't make it um, will just decompose in there naturally. So if you guys have any other questions about that, feel free to ask. Were there any live? Tips? There were no live tipped. Okay. So live pipped would be zero. Oh my goodness, thank <laughs> you. I'm like one no. Okay, did everybody get that zero? Yes. Okay. 
So the next one is dead in the nest. Did we find any? Did we have any dead in the nest? No. Okay. So dead in nest and live in nest would be turtles that actually made it out of the shells and were dead or live in the nest. Um, we did not find any dead or live in the nest, which actually, um, you know, unfortunately you guys aren't going to get to see a hatchling today, but that's a good thing that all these turtles made it out on their own and made it down to the water. That's what we like to see. So that probably means we're going to have a really good emergent success rate on this nest. Um, whole eggs, which is next, is going to be eggs that didn't end up actually hatching. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said more. <laughs> Just so, to answer the question that came through, dead pipped was one. Dead pipped was one. Dead pip was one, that is correct. And they put it back in the nest. They buried it back in, into the nest. Okay. So sometimes you also have whole eggs in the nest. And these are eggs that either didn't fully develop or they may have been infertile or they just, for whatever reason, didn't end up hatching. Um, these also go back in the nest. We do not crack them open. We put them back as whole eggs. Um, you can see sometimes they have the marks on them. But these uh, turtle eggs also are different than chicken eggs. You can see they're a little more pliable. Um, so they, they dent a little bit. And the reason for that is when the mother is dropping these down into that deep hole, uh, it's so they don't crack and they're more likely to form to one another when they're able to be a little more flexible like that as they're down there in the egg chamber incubating. Interesting. So how many of those did we have? Nine? We had nine whole eggs. Nine whole eggs. Damaged eggs are going to be zero and damaged eggs could be eggs where the roots from plants grew through the eggs, or it could be from a nesting female that when she nested, um, another nesting female damaged them, or actually the mother of this nest damaged eggs on her own. And that's data we would know before this next nest actually hatched. Uh, for this nest, it's zero. Uh, we didn't have anything else that was affecting it. There was also no predation of this nest prior to it hatching, so there are no damaged eggs to report for this. So you can go ahead and put zero for that. And then remarks is if we have anything to add that we saw with this nest. So one thing I think we should note is that this nest hatched from another body pit. Um, so another turtle came and actually laid her nest next to this nest and created a body pit on top of where this egg chamber was. And that happens sometimes, but it didn't seem to affect the hatch out of this nest. Most of the hatchlings made it out on their own. It was pretty successful. Um, and you're gonna calculate that in the calculations below, which are gonna give you a hatching success rate and an emergent success rate. Um, your initials are what go on the bottom where it says initials. That's just so we know whose data sheet it is. <laughs> um, but do you want to talk any more about that? Okay, so did everybody get all the data? So really, uh, data's we first. Need repeat, we need to repeat latitude one more time. Uh, you need to repeat what? Latitude. latitude one more time. Okay, latitude is 26.797548. Can you also repeat the remarks one more time and explain the uh, the neighboring nest creating the body pit? Okay, the remarks that I wrote down on here were hatched from another body pit. And I think, and I'll try to explain it in my terms, and I know um, Teal can further, is that another turtle came up on top of the nest and created that big indentation. And they noted that because usually the, the nest is behind the indentation. So the turtle comes up, makes that big indentation, and then the, the nest is behind her because she's digging behind her. But apparently 
another turtle came up on the nest and made another indentation. So I don't know if I explained that, but yeah. that's what I wrote. I wrote hatch from another body pit. That's that indentation. And then okay. I put my initials. All right, and we had nine whole eggs. And Alicia, just so you know, we have five minutes left. Okay, so let me let me wrap this up for you. Um, you have some calculations to do underneath. And we also have um, one of uh, Teal's students that's working on the calculations. We probably don't have enough time to do it in the field. So I'm assuming all you guys will do that for homework and get the, the emergent hatchlings and get the, um, the, the total and how, how successful the nest was. And we'll send that to your teachers. I'll send that to Miss McGill, the correct answer to see if you were correct, okay? We just don't have time to do it in the field. But I know we only have five minutes and I just learned a whole bunch about green sea turtles and nests and whole eggs and pipped and, and now I'm gonna go home and do this to see how successful this nest is. And I really appreciate um, Teal coming out here and sharing all her expertise and especially Colette. I don't know. I just saw like a leg and some <laughs> sand going up and she had to do the same thing as the mother sea turtle. Dig the thing up and she had to cover it back up. But um, I don't see any tracks that she made. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I did too. And this is just one location that's really challenging with, with our uh, reception. Usually in other locations, believe it or not, Swamp is a little better. Um, but I'm glad you stuck with us and we appreciate it and hope you guys learned a lot. I know I did. So thank you so much, Teal, and thank you for your team. And um, we'll hope to see you guys next time. Where it will be, I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah, um, so before much. we go, we completely sign off since we do have a couple minutes left. Teal, can you go ahead and answer that question about marine biologists and what they study? Yes. Um, so there's all kinds of different fields of marine biology. I specifically decided to go into sea turtle work, but you could do all kinds of different things from oceanography and, and studying our ocean patterns and, and the weather associated all the way to um, beach work and sand work, um, doing geology and looking at our rock formations. Yeah, like Alicia and TJ. Um, or marine conservation work. That's another great field to get involved in as well. Um, definitely, I didn't think that I was gonna get as involved with lighting compliance as I did. And I have a really strong background in compliance and code enforcement now. And that was something completely different, but a, a really cool part of marine biology because you do have to work a lot on compliance, especially when you're working with endangered species, because there's a lot of rules associated with them and protecting them. So that's something different to go into as well. But I mean, if you could think of an animal or a plant or a coral, even anything in the ocean that you would want to study or that you you would like to learn more about it's out there and it's definitely a part of marine biology and going into this field it's so broad and um even being in florida this is really a great place to have those opportunities thank you students please make sure that you guys are filling out that attendance form you guys can go ahead and scan the QR code that is on the screen if you have not already, or you guys have the Google form uh, Omni link um, going across the bottom. So all you have to do is open up a new tab and type in the HTTPS uh, colon backslash backslash forms.gle backslash P-U-F-S-M-Y-X-R-B-M-L-U-T-A-J G6. And we thank you guys for joining us. Well, it's our pleasure. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Students, make sure that you guys are filling out the Google form, please, so you can get credit and so we can get your feedback. And we hope that you enjoyed and we will see you guys next month for another adventure with Palm Beach County Environmental Resource Management. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.